Hello YouTube, it's DRC here. One more video from my noisy office before I move to where it is actually quiet. Um, I want to give you a quick video about Touch Key, which is a simple on-screen hotkey program for the Surface Pro 3, Surface Pro 4, ThinkPad Yogas, anything that you might use as an art pad away from a keyboard. So if you just go and Google Touch Key, it'll pull up the top result, which is kanagi.net, K-A-N-N-A-G-I.net, forward slash touch key. Um, it's their main website. It's a simple, lightweight Japanese program that just gives you an on-screen dock that you can fully customize. And the best part is, is it seems to never crash. It has no problems, and you can make multiple uh, docks for multiple pro pro programs that will automatically switch when you change your program. So when you come to their main page, it says touch key in gigantic letters, and there's just Japanese text everywhere else. The only thing you really need to know about this page is that this is the download link for Windows. It only works on Windows, and um, it'll start your download like any other download. It's only about 600 kilobytes. It's super tiny, but if you're like me and your internet is currently terrible, it can take a while. So after you download, you're left with a zip file, which we can then extract and open up and see what's going on. So the first thing you'll notice is that some of the files have really strange text, and that's because they were originally Japanese characters, and when we uncompressed them, we didn't have the right codecs installed, so they didn't automatically transfer over. But for most people, it doesn't matter. It still works. So the first thing you can do is you can come down here and launch touch key, and you'll be greeted by this settings screen. This is your first time setup, and you can access this anytime by right-clicking on the tray icon and selecting settings. But you probably won't need to because all the macro editing and other stuff will be done through some of the other programs that are included in this package. So I'm running it on the Surface Pro 3. I'm on my desktop right now to record this, but I do use this on my Surface Pro 3 and I love it. I could not live without it. And so these are just presets for your monitor's resolution. So like the Surface Pro 3, which has a big resolution, has to have bigger buttons so they work better and things that have lower res resolution like a Vio Duo 11, the icons will be smaller so they appear proper on the screen. Um, so down here, you have your background color, your foreground color, and your button size and font size. You can leave the button font size alone for the most part unless you experience problems like the buttons are too big or too small, you can change them accordingly. Um, I prefer to have my dock dark, so I choose a black background and then a light gray foreground color for the text. Just easier on the eyes and nice. Um, and then over here in the top right, you have positions. So you have lower left, lower right, and floating. I choose floating because that just means you can drag it anywhere you want and it can be there. Um, touch guard, I don't use. Hide when approaching by pen, this is great, which means if you're drawing something and your pen goes over where the dock is, the dock just vanishes and you can keep drawing and you can never touch it with your pen. It does cause some hiccups where the surface gets a little confused about what is doing the input. But for the most part, it works perfectly. I um, have it on top of taskbar, so it's on top of everything, even though I hide my taskbar on my surface, but it's just a little ease of access thing. So after that's all set up, we can click OK. And there it is. We have our little dock. And if I was on my surface, I could just poke one of these, and it would be uh, the same as inputting it on a keyboard. So it's great for switching between like pen and lasso or you know, toggling between alt to color pick on Photoshop or shift when, you know, you're transforming something. So that's pretty much it. Now, the big thing is that this looks great, but it doesn't really work that great. The, you know, the layout isn't what I would use, basically. So we'll come down here to the ta taskbar down here and right click on it and select quit. And so that'll close touch key. And now we're going to open the macro editor too. There's two of them. The first one is simple and it's mostly text and it's way more difficult than it needs to be. They just included it there for, you know, continuity's sake. So this is the macro two editor and it's super simple. Um, oh, all my windows went away. Oh, well. So what we can do is we can make a new macro uh, setting or dock and then we can just add buttons. We can add as many buttons as, as we want. We can change the buttons width. It can be wide they can be tall whatever you want and so there's a huge amount of custom ability here and it's so great and so every tool or keystroke you can imagine you can do you can just click down here on the hotkey and you know control c or control shift c 
Um, some inputs don't work the best, like Alt sometimes will default to Menu um, when you click away and other stuff like that. Um, but you can just click this little button right here and then you have all of your keys. You can do a custom key editor or a macro key editor where it pulls up a oops, wrong one, sorry, uh, key editor. And you know, if you for some reason can't get Alt to stick or Shift to stick, you can just select it here. And so, like Alt Z and OK, and then it puts it in here. So, if your keyboard is screwing up, it's a workaround. But for the most part, you can just put all your inputs in with the keyboard and uh, off you go. And you can name them, you can change the color, you can give them custom images whatever you want. Customization is at your fingertips. Now, when I first got this, I was a little confused at why you would want larger buttons, um, wide or high. I mean, for some tools, it can look nice, but there wasn't really that. But there's different types that you can set these buttons to. Normal, hold, vertical slider, and horizontal slider. And these are the two big ones, because you can turn them into kind of a scroll up, scroll down, zoom with your thumb. You know, if you want to zoom in closer, you just roll up on the button and you zoom in, or change brush sizes. Now, while it's cool, it's not very practical, and I prefer just to have a bunch of small buttons that I can just click forward and back to change brush size or to switch between my tools. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the only other mode that I use is toggle, and it's because on the surface you can't press something with your thumb and draw at the same time because of the way the palm rejection software works. So in this case, you'll use toggle, and so like if you want to toggle yeah, see now Alt isn't working, it goes to menu for whatever reason. Um, if you want to toggle, so this would be like if you need to hold down Shift and you can't, you can press it and Shift will be on and you can drag out your transpose or your, uh, you know, your transform area. Or if you want to switch to the color picker and then switch back, you can hold, press the Alt toggle key and you'll switch to it and back and forth. So I'll change this one just to, oops, Alt and I'll make it a smaller button, and I will go to hotkeys, key editor, alt, okay, and then it shows up as menu, but it is actually alt, and then I'll put this one to shift, and press shift, and then I will change these to toggles, just to show you how it works, and so now I can toggle them on and off whenever I want. So after we have this all set up, however, you feel fit and whatever works for your style, you're going to go up here to this blue save icon and overwrite the macro text and or the macro portrait. And so this is two different dock setups you can use um, depending on which way your tablet is turned. So for example, when it's in landscape mode, which is just the normal macro text, I have two rows by six. And when I have it in portrait, I have one row by four or five because it's proportionally less space. At least it feels like that to my brain. Um, and so you can pick and choose however you want to have it. So for now, we'll just save it to the macro text and we'll overwrite it and close this. And now the next time that we open up touch key, our dock is right there. So everything we just added, edited is all right there, good to go. So what we'll do is we'll close this again and change the last couple of things. So. I mentioned earlier, I believe, that you can set specific docs for specific programs. So if we go to the process list editor, it'll bring up a little window and it shows us our application and then what text file it'll be running for that application or what doc version it'll use. So for example, if I wanted to add a customized doc for Photoshop, I can click add. And so right now I'm going to go find my photoshop.exe file, which I have saved here, and so I'll select photoshop.exe and I'll open it. So it says application, Photoshop, and I can choose a custom key map for this. So I could have it be the macro text or I could make a duplicate of it. Um, so for right now, we'll just copy and paste the macro text. We make a copy of it and we'll rename it to macro. Dot, uh, let's just call it Photoshop, shall we? So that will be our Photoshop macro key. So we'll browse to it and we'll open macro dash Photoshop. Open, okay. So now whenever we launch Photoshop, touch key will automatically switch to my Photoshop based doc. So to illustrate that, I will open back up the macro editor. I will open up the macro Photoshop text and I will just change this to photo 
and this one to shop and then I will save it and overwrite macro.photoshop yes okay and now when we launch touch key we have our original uh, doc that we made earlier and if I launch photoshop you'll see it'll change in just a minute as soon as it finishes initializing oh and there's lazy Mizumi. there we go so now you can see it's changed to photoshop and then if i close that it'll change right back so that's really handy because on my surface i switch a lot between mischief if i'm just in like free sketching or doing figure drawing or manga studio if i'm doing line work or sketching because i really prefer manga studio on my surface but there will be videos about that in the near future and then, but I do switch from Manga Studio to Photoshop if I'm doing inking or coloring or other things. So it's nice to have, you know, docs that just automatically change as I go through the different programs. So there's only one more gripe that I have with TouchKey that's something that's easy to change, um, but it's not in a menu anywhere. And that's the opacity of the, uh, the doc. So as you can see right now, it's see-through. You can see what's behind it. And some people like that, it drives me personally insane. So there's a really easy way to get it to whatever you want. So we'll come down here and we'll close it back up and we'll open our touch key. And in your touch key folder, there is a settings INI file. And if we open it, you can see the text is still screwed up, but the important text is perfectly fine. And what we're looking for is down at the very bottom under, okay, not the very bottom, under form here so it's kind of in the middle of the text document and you can see we've got our button size and our font size but the most important one is opacity and by default it's set to 70 so what we'll do is we'll change this to 100 or you know whatever you want 95 90 it doesn't matter so we'll save this and then we'll relaunch touch key and boom 100 percent opacity completely dark and I love that. So you can set to whatever you want. I think on my service I have it set to 95 just so I can see for sure. But otherwise that's that's pretty much it. That's all you need to know. That's all you have to set up and yeah, it's great. So give it a look, give it a try. It's really lightweight. It takes no resources and I couldn't live without it. You know, I curl up on the couch with my service and just sketch away while I'm watching a movie or something and it's so hard just to use a keyboard when I want to turn it to portrait or landscape. So this is the fix. And I think anybody who's using a Surface or an art tablet that has touch and is not connected, you know, to a desktop where you're sitting at a desk, this is what you should use. There's other alternatives like um, Radial Menu, which isn't actively being developed anymore and crashes constantly on Windows 10. There's some other paid options, but they're like 20 bucks and they don't work as well. So this is kind of my go-to thing. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it works for you. And if you have any questions, as always, leave them down below or send me an email at drctormented at gmail.com. Um, in the coming weeks, now that I have a new office, you can expect to see my thoughts on the Surface Pro 3 with the Surface Pro 4 Pen, my thoughts on Manga Studio and Photoshop on the Surface, as well as thoughts and gripes and what I think about the Surface Pro 4 versus the Surface Pro 3, and if it's a worthwhile upgrade or if to artists it really makes much of a difference. So I hope you guys have a good new year, um, and yeah, I'll see you guys real soon.